Listen here, girl, I know you think it's a game, but it is absolutely not, okay? This is the energy supplement from Just Move Supplements. That's right, it's damn near all gone, girl. And that's because I had to get that energy up so I could complete the workout, so I could give y'all this body, this transformation, get into it, okay? And I'm done working out now, so that's why we're moving on to the protein shake. Oh yes, it's already in there, girl. It's already made right here. This is the mixture of the banana pudding, the chocolate cake, and the buttercream cupcake. And you really wanna be fancy, you can go ahead and add that blueberry muffin if that's what you wanna do, girl. But for me, it's these three right here, okay? You put that with some almond milk, you mix it all up in honey, okay? Your muscles have gained life new energy agility get into it okay just move supplements thank you very much hold up chief okay don't forget about that tlc nutri burst to get that multivitamin probably because we all need a little extra and child if you want that sea moss that go down smooth don't come up rough okay get into the tlc nautica sea moss yes get that for me and child if your stomach hurt and you need to move some things around so you can be free okay go ahead and get that ISOT down below in the description box. Get it all from me. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Now come on in, now come. Sorry y'all, y'all know I'm weird, whatever. Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Bondi Blue. So let's go ahead, let's go ahead. Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Bondi Blue. Okay, follow me on Instagram and let's get into the video, all right? Hi, I'm back. Girl, listen, at first, I didn't know if I was going to come to y'all for this. I really didn't. But now that I've sat and watched it and after I've seen how you guys have responded on the Internet, you know what I'm saying? Some of which you guys are adding me in on Twitter. Yes, girl, I have a lot to say okay i'm so so excited to be here i hope you are excited to be here like the video like the video you gotta subscribe to comment so if you was wondering why you can't comment it's because you're not a subscriber and it's free so that's the least you can do all right girl and listen members only don't forget we do members only every week a few couple you okay? can't the members will get it before everybody else if i don't feel like doing work okay which usually does not occur so everybody gets something but y'all know what i'm saying okay if you are a wino if you're here from tasha's channel what's up girl <laughs> how you doing okay um if you're hate watching me <laughs> what it is ho or what's up you know what i'm saying um and yeah we're here for real housewives of potomac i'm excited to be back and i want to go ahead and jump right into it because i have a read for the end of this review oh yes okay something that i have composed last night after i really sat in it and i thought about it i came up with some reads specifically for giselle and robin because i'm tired <laughs> I'm tired, girl. I'm tired of all of y'all, okay? I am tired of every single one of y'all that act like y'all don't know what's going on here. Let's take it blow by blow, though, okay? They got Karen sitting next to Giselle and Robin. Giselle was like, oh, who's sitting here? <laughs> Not you, girl. <laughs> it won't be you. This reunion show, one of the only franchises where somebody that does absolutely nothing every season, but withhold vulnerability and emotion, gets to sit right next to Andy as if she's had anything going on. Girl, you ain't had nothing going on since Monique brought your, your little boyfriend's ex onto the show and he broke up with your ass. You ain't had nothing going on really since then because anything dealing with jamal bryant i always felt like was a scheme that y'all had set up to come to us with the bullshit okay but they got karen sitting next to andy giselle and robin aneka says that her first season was a 10 out of 10 and i would like to say bitch that's cat okay i hate to start cursing so early but that's cat okay that's so cat 
I can't even, okay? If you've even seen that on Watch What Happens Live, she's not an honest individual. She's not an honest person. All she do is lie, okay? She don't tell the truth about nothing that she think, feel, or experience on this show. So I really don't have time, okay? I don't know whether she gonna come back or not. I don't really care. I probably won't be here for season nine, okay? Andy admits this season was frustrating because nobody was getting along. They go through the whole obligatory sex convo that all of the ladies seem to enjoy, regardless of how much they don't like each other. Ashley has to share with us that she holds Gullum's cum in her mouth until he falls asleep. And because he's old and she really uses her huge head to give amazing knowledge to that old ass man, um, she knocks him out within a minute and then she can, you know, spit it out because she pretends as if she's in the swallows, but really she's not. Um, I think that's gross. I think that I think that's gross. Um, I'm sorry, you guys. I hate to tell y'all. I hate to disappoint all you niggas out there. Um, I'm spitting it out. <laughs> I'm grown, girl. I'm spitting it out. I, I'm not. I'm not digesting my gag reflex. The way my girl. Listen, I won't even let the mother like girl. The one time that happened to me, I almost drowned. Like. I mean, nigga was, I mean, like, the, 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 it was just a constant stream, okay? It was a constant stream. And just when you thought it would be over, it wasn't. It wasn't. So, as much as I love my man, listen. We've been together a long time. We tried some things, but as a way of being, uh, oh no, <laughs> the head is a prelude, not a finisher around here. Okay. I don't even understand. Okay. I'm sitting on gold. We don't, we don't, we don't coup de gras with our mouth. That don't even make sense. Okay. Not with a man. Like. <laughs> You don't cool to growl with your mouth with a man. Bitch, what's going on with y'all? <laughs> I'm sorry. That's disgusting. Ashley, you're gross. Robin, you're gross. Y'all are nasty as fuck. Like, I don't know why, but it seems like the women that have long-term relationships with Caucasian men do the nastiest shit, money. Like, it's crazy, okay? She says she holds it in her mouth until he falls asleep. And this is what I be talking about with a lot of women that pump fake for their husband's ego. Why? <laughs> Girl, why are you doing that? That's crazy. Once it's out of his body, why the f should he care where it goes? Like what? Like, excuse me? You drink it then. Uh, that's Michael. He probably likes to. We're going to move on from there. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is what they were talking about. This is what Ashley does. Y'all, the way Ashley's wig is lifting off of her head, girl, help us all. Okay? Help us all. Okay? Robin can't tell us for certain if she's been cheated on. Really, Robin? You can't, te you can't tell us if you've been cheated on? For certain, but you can tell us that it was Chris's limp weenie dog on the internet, even though I remember when those pictures came out and they were not attached to a body. It was a peen, but there was no body in the picture. So for you to even say that up out of your mouth and then get mad at Candace for feeling like y'all continue to malign her husband and totally ignore what the fuck is going on over there with Juan Dixon. Y'all proved her point even during this reunion show. And there are still people acting like Candace is making something up in her mind. And this lady took what, what chest she had to talk about somebody else's husband cheating with a lip dick. Girl. What the f has Chris ever done to you for you to put him out there like that? Who the f 
posts limp dick pics besides Drake. Drake is the only one that had his shit up there like a flag on a windy day on the internet like it was something to be proud of. Let me tell you something, men. Those of y'all that may fall upon me every now and again, if it ain't hard, don't send it. And honestly, if she ain't asked for it, don't send it neither. Okay? Those are the rules. Don't send me nothing I ain't asked for and don't send me nothing soft. I don't know what you think I'm here for. But it ain't for, it ain't for nothing soft. Okay? Ah. Ah. Uh-uh. She thinks that Juan was supportive, but he declined to be at the reunion, even with no job. Hold up. Even, even with no job. Oh, yes. I'll repeat this shit to get my point across. Wendy says he should have been here if he cared about you to take some of the heat off of you. Robin is like, girl, why, why would he ever want to do that? Why would he ever want to do that? She's malfunctioning. Why would he ever want to secure me? <laughs> Robin, listen, listen, baby. I get it. You know what I'm saying? I understand. I do. I do. I remember. Okay. I remember what it was like to be all head, head first into somebody that I don't know, treats you like shit. Yeah, I know what that's like. I do. And Robin, 28 years is too long. <laughs> Bitch, 28 years is too long to be at this point in a relationship. And he's still not standing beside you, bitch. You standing beside him, but he is not standing beside you. And there are so many people that feel like, it doesn't matter. I, somebody on Twitter, I had to block them because I don't know who the you think about to argue with you with all them numbers in your username. Block. Anyway, but why do y'all think that a show called Real Housewives shouldn't require the men to be somewhat involved? And let's be clear. Michael has been more involved than Juan. So even with Ashley and Michael pretending to break up so that he doesn't have to be on the show, way more effort than Juan has ever put in in order for Robin to keep this check. So now y'all both are, because we still acting like it's a, it's just, you know, I didn't realize that we were acting like that wasn't an announcement that Robin got fired. Now we're, I, I thought that, Six days ago, when we talked about this, Candace quitting, Robin getting fired, and then somebody else not coming back. I thought that when we got that news, that was what it was. But apparently, y'all telling us now that it's all speculation, and we don't know if Robin really got fired. Okay, let's, let's pretend like Robin didn't get fired. Your show's ratings are going down, 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 down. So if you don't do something, Nobody's going to be there but the Green Eyed Bandits fa uh, faves. Maybe a Karen fave. But outside of that, girl, Ashley don't have enough faves for it to matter, okay? And we wondering if Ashley's coming back because it's possible that Ashley may not be coming back. And I would prefer for Ashley to come back before I, I ask for y'all to bring Robin back, even though Ashley very much, you know, football head ass worked on my nerves at this reunion show. But at least she going to put in the work to pretend for the show. Robin don't even put in no fucking work to pretend like everything cool. There's no effort. I don't need, I don't understand. The Jasmine brand is Candace and Wendy's friend. So I don't believe it. The Jasmine brand is also not known to cap. I, 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 I that's one of, one of the used to be really one of the go-to blogs for real, for real. If you was looking for the story to actually be true. So regardless to whether they're friends with Candace and Wendy, Jasmine brand, I believe is not a source that's going to just put out any old thing. 
And no, Candace didn't get fired. She quit. Why the hell would they fire the, the housewife that they blame everything on? Why would y'all, why would y'all fire her? But it doesn't even matter because at the end of the day, she quit because she was bullied. She quit because she was bullied and there was no accountability. Why stay on the show so you can continue to be a punching bag so these hoes don't have to actually embarrass themselves and tell the truth about what goes on in their lives? And that's what I don't like about a lot of the commentary around this show is ain't nobody keeping it. Y'all not keeping it real about this shit. The other YouTube, the YouTubers are. The YouTubers for the most part are keeping it. Shout out to Rodney. Shout out to the Brooke Ashley. Okay. That's the only people I've really watched so far. But ultimately, it's, it's, it's capped all over the place with the way y'all have changed the narrative from Giselle outwardly lying about what happened between she and Chris, lying about Chris touching Deborah, Ashley bringing her lying ass friend on the show to make it seem like he was flirting with her. Y'all, that was absolutely a setup. And Robin knew about it. Robin at first felt like she wasn't going to go along with it. But I bet you any fucking money, Giselle brought it to her attention that you're supposed to be on my side. And let's not forget what he's out here doing. Because you can't tell me that wine ain't been done Robin's ass out this entire time. Every time Robin has been on the show acting depressed, drunk, irate like a 12 year old white boy anytime she's done any of that i believe is because at home wine is tearing that ass up wine is tearing her ass up and then publicly humiliating her and then getting on the phone on the show and cursing her out and making her feel stupid for being emotional about him further humiliating her and then not giving a fuck. She could pretend like it don't hurt when she want, like, you know, I don't care, girl, you absolutely do care. That's why you feel the need to protect him. Because if you really didn't give a fuck, you'd be like, yeah, I think he out there cheating. And guess what? I'm still not going nowhere. If you really didn't give a fuck, if it really didn't hurt Robin, you would have just kept it a buck and been like, and, and yeah, he cheating and I ain't going nowhere. It is what it is. <laughs> it's fucked up. It's fucked up, but I ain't going nowhere. I ain't tired yet. I would appreciate that and respect that more than the way you try to act like you don't care. And, and you try to be obtuse and you answer questions in such a stupid way on watch what happens live this is your opportunity to prove something to the network nigga ask you why didn't you tell us instead of being vulnerable and saying i was embarrassed i was trying to protect Juan. i didn't want you know my sons to see that and instead of being honest in any form she turns around and says girl i thought karen was gonna bring it up that's your answer that's your answer. You can't even be vulnerable when we checking you about the fact that you haven't been vulnerable. She hasn't shared anything that's been going on with her, y'all. And I bet y'all any money you cannot tell me that it hasn't been several things that has gone on with Robin and Juan throughout the years of her being on Potomac. And that shit has never made it to the show. But you can put on a P-Man costume to go and make fun of Karen for not really living in Potomac, even though your fucking ass couldn't afford to live the house, living in the house she was renting. You couldn't afford to live in the house that Karen was renting, but you could afford to go get a pizza man's uniform and run up around her house. And all y'all thought this shit was funny back then. But to be very clear, they were bullying Karen that whole first couple of seasons because she said she was the grand dame. They got real upset about that. And decided from then on, they were going to constantly be poking at Karen every time something happened in her life. The taxes, they made the T-shirts, they, they brought, went up around the house. Like for Robin to act like she has never really pushed other people when it comes to their lives is so fucking cap. What about when she rolled up on Ashley at her restaurant? 
Y'all wanted to put Michael out there for what he had going on, remember? Robin was the one that let us know she heard Michael say that he wanted to suck somebody. She heard, she the one that, that validated that shit. So please, please stop playing with me. And another thing, why do you think that Robin should be able to be on a reality show and be so gung-ho about not sharing anything that's going on with her because it's embarrassing or it you know it's gonna hurt Juan girl now y'all trying to save face and ain't nobody got no job over there allegedly allegedly Robin has been a bully and done the most several times and this is what a colorism comes into play because y'all didn't forgot about it or y'all act like it was so funny when they were doing it to Karen. It was so, it was so cool and funny when Robin rolled up on Monique and Monique had that umbrella at her fucking neck, right? There have been so many times that, I mean, even when it came to Wendy, are we forgetting the way Robin went at Wendy? Like you were right there with Giselle, happy Eddie, all of that bullshit. Y'all don't remember that scene when Wendy and Giselle had gotten into it because Giselle was so gung-ho about bringing it on the show that Eddie was cheating on Wendy and it was Kat. So they was like, I don't want you to bring this up at all on camera because it's a lie. And they still brought it up on camera and then tried, it th and tried to bring it to Wendy. Wendy goes off on Giselle and doesn't want to verbally continue to talk about it on camera because she knows the more she talks about it on camera, the more she adds validity to the rumor. That's how reality TV goes. So when Robin turns around and is like, wait, wait, what happened? Wait, what happened? Wendy, what happened? What, wait, what, what are you upset about? Wait, wait, what was said about him? You wanted her to reiterate so she can say it on camera again to further validate that there was a possibility that she was feeling insecure because her husband was out there cheating on her and that's when, why she went and got her body done. Are y'all serious? That's what y'all did to Wendy. And then when Wendy turned around and told you, fuck you finally, Robin, that's when you decided that I don't like Wendy anymore. We're not cool and we're going to ice her out. And then it was the same thing with Candace. Y'all plotted on Candace and Chris, just like y'all did with Monique. This is another reason why, Candace, you have got to go to therapy outside of your mom and deal with your people pleasing thing because why the fuck was you still crying and trying to be friends with Robin? Robin was never really your friend. She tolerated you. I don't care what she was doing off camera. To me, if you really my friend, there's going to be a time when we are in private and in front of everybody where you tell Giselle, say, bro, I love you and I love her and you doing too much. You never do that. The one time you said something to Giselle, she checked the fuck out you and that never happened again. Running your ass. Running you. A grown woman that has squeezed two children out of her body being ran by the, the, the mean girl sorority incorporated bullshit as grown ass women. She's still trying to renovate her house and you over there just running behind somebody that don't have her shit together halfway as much as you do. And then I want y'all to pay attention to the way that Giselle and Robin have this united front shit on a reunion show, but them hoes ain't friends like that no more. And Ashley and Giselle coming out with their little clothing line to me was an extension of that. And please tell me what's going to happen with Reasonably Shady when uh, Shady Aftermath Entertainment wins that lawsuit what's gonna happen with the podcast i'm just saying writing on the wall robin explains to us Juan has a weird thing with cleaning out his texts and dms because he doesn't like his phone being cluttered he could be ocd about his phone and he can also be hiding it he's a hoe Candace says Robin kept her drama a secret but demanded the group share their lives. Robin denies this, but Robin dressed like the pizza man to put Karen on blast for not living in Potomac. Went in on Karen about her taxes, wore those t-shirts. Like, I hate the way a lot of times when they talk about how Karen goes after Robin, y'all forget about the seasons of Robin constantly picking at Karen. 
picking at Karen, picking at Karen, like unnecessarily so. Like they would pick at Karen. I felt like at times where it was just like, damn, can you give it a rest? Now that Karen is giving Robin that exact same energy back, now everybody's acting like they don't remember the seasons of them picking on Karen for everything that she had going on. Down to making it seem like she used her parents' death, which she just recently did. But back then when it actually happened, like, y'all y'all really didn't let up on her at all, in my opinion. They didn't show any empathy towards Karen when she was going through her parents passing away. So I think it's crazy to me how now, you know, she got to sit there and hold, uh, you know, gizzard neck hand while she talk about her daddy. And another thing. Y'all, I'm telling y'all right now, Giselle is a cold-hearted, unemotional bitch because her daddy was one. That's no disrespect because I call him how I see him. And I know prominent New Orleans men like that. And there is a emotional disconnect. They want the best for their daughters, but there is also an expectation of perfection. And it does not come with emotional support. It comes with discipline and telling you to suck it up. Suck it up. Suck it up. So now when we can't get a vulnerable version of Giselle to save our fucking lives, it's because that's how she was raised. It is. It's how she was raised. And that's sad. It really is. Because essentially you try to act like, you know, you all hard and shit, but you really not. Because if you were, you would just be able to stand in your emotions. That's hard. It's hard to stand in your emotions and be vulnerable. Trust me. Okay? I do it sometimes and I feel... <laughs> okay? I feel... <laughs> after. All right? But I could definitely see Giselle's dad and them having very high expectations of her and not being very emotionally supportive and telling her whenever she did have emotional issues to just suck it up because you're the pretty one. So you ain't got nothing to be sad about. So I really do think that there's something to why she is the way she is, but I can't really give a fuck because I think she's so terrible. Like I, I don't care. And it's been about her. It's been about her this whole time, y'all. She's always been mean. She's always picked people apart. Like everybody forgets that she and uh, uh, Karen picked Ashley apart that first season. Karen was the only one that really got the heat for it. Y'all was mad at Karen for being the grand dame and judging and all of that. Judging Ashley. I remember because I was there. You know, I reviewed it. And I felt like Giselle was being just as like uncouth. But everybody thought this shit was so funny, but it was mean. It was mean shit. And then Ashley eventually figured out how to fit in. Everybody has tried to do what Ashley did, which is get bullied by Giselle and then kiss up enough to fit in. But if you notice, there are people that can't get into the click. And if she comes back, I wonder what's going to happen. If Aneka comes back, I wonder what's going to happen between Giselle and Aneka. Because I feel like everybody tried to kiss Giselle's ass. And it seems as if, if your complexion was not light enough, she could not forgive you and move past anything that y'all have gone through. Because please understand that Karen has said worse shit to Giselle than than Candace has, in my opinion. Bringing up that they, you know, the sing sing comment, Karen's old ass be getting her words wrong, but she was really saying, you let that ugly nigga Jamal, <laughs> I'm just saying, like in comparison to how beautiful she is, when you really think about it, you let that man dog you out, probably give you a STD and then get the congregation pregnant. And you were sitting there thinking it was better than those women in that congregation. All for you to get your fucking face cracked when you found out that Jamal was fucking them. Which meant your beauty did not protect you from getting dog out. Your beauty is supposed to make you the, the, the choice, right? You're supposed to be the one that gets picked because you're so beautiful. But he picked you and then continued to pick bitches right after you. Girl. 
girl. And then you never went on to like replace him with a real man of, of money or like you ain't never been able to hold on to a man since and girl listen it ain't nothing to hold on to no man please don't get me wrong um but it just kind of goes to show that at some point your beauty is in vain your light skin and light eyes meant nothing in the grand scheme of things because you still end up on the same stage with women that are less attractive or darker than you and some of them the darker ones have more than you grew up with affluent households or become affluent from their own hard work and education, something that you like to hold over people's head with the Hampton shit, but you can't do that to Wendy. You also couldn't really dog Wendy out because she's in your sorority. So I think you had a lot of like negative feelings about Wendy and Candace based off of the lives that they've lived. Of course, you're not going to be jealous of the other light skin holes on the show and that's no disrespect but if you're a woman that only comes to the table with your looks like Giselle does in a little bit of education so you can you know pump fake like you're an elite or something like that but essentially if you were your house would be done being renovated at this point <laughs> but like Giselle in some way feels like she's better than Mia and Ashley because she doesn't have to lay down for the paycheck you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, resents the fact that Candace, the brown skin girl, grew up with a silver spoon in her mouth that was better than yours. I'm just saying, Candace is going to always be okay. If Giselle doesn't work, I don't know if she's going to be okay. I hope her dad left her some stuff. <laughs> a $900,000 teardown. Remind them. Oh, yes. Okay. I'm sorry, this is going to be a reading session in case y'all missed it. Um, Because I feel like I'm going to do what should have been done on that reunion. And that's read deals down. Thank you. Have a good day. Um, Candace says Robin kept her drama a secret but demanded the group share their lives. Robin denied this, but I just gave y'all several examples of when I felt like Robin absolutely was demanding that. We're not even going to get into how you tried to out Candace make an issue she tried to make an issue with candace when she brought that speaker out when she knows good and goddamn well that candace wasn't talking about her because y'all are cool like that as you said so if y'all was really cool like that why you didn't just hit her up or talk to her on the side like you would have giselle that's another thing. You don't give any of your other uh, friendships the same respect that you give Giselle. And I couldn't be friends with you if you if you was like that. Like, bitch, you're not about to keep playing in my face. We're not friends if we're not getting equal respect. I don't give a fuck how long you've been friends with Giselle. She also pretends to know what's going on so she can force other people to discuss whatever is going on with them. I told y'all that, you know, that shit with Wendy. She's always asking questions. She's always asking for you to clarify. So that whole thing about her, you know, I don't, I don't demand for anybody. There have been so many times when Robin has been asking questions and people are like, oh my God, Robin, what the fuck? Like, what, what do you want me to answer for you, sweetheart? Robin keeps denying that Juan cheated during the season. But to me, Juan was always cheating. I think Juan was cheating on her, like I said, two seasons ago when she was patting her puss and getting into it with Wendy and drinking all the time. Y'all remember when, when Robin was really acting like a lush on the show when she was depressed and why I was telling her to get her ass up out the bed girl, he was cheating on you. Then he was cheating on you. Then I don't think he's ever not been cheating on you. Like, I don't, I don't like, even when y'all weren't together and y'all were living in the same house. Yes. You're an old faithful, bitch. You're a cooch that he can get whenever he wants it and you wash his clothes and take care of his kids. You're a maid, a mattress, and a mule. Shout out to Erica De Niro. That's all you are, Tawan. Because if you were more than that, Tawan, we would see it at any moment in you guys' interactions. And when I tell y'all I have not seen that man act like he liked that lady not one time, not one time, y'all. I can't even say I felt like he liked her at that wedding. Because that felt like something y'all just threw together to prove a point to everybody. And then the cheating allegations came out at the exact same time, bitch. That Girl. Yes, Robin is an old faithful. That's all she is. Okay, she is Mrs. Yeah, 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 Mrs. Yeah. Child, it is a 
dream song. Okay. If you don't know about the dream. Okay. Um, when asked why she didn't tell the show, she said she was waiting on Karen to bring it up. Giselle says Karen's tax issues were in the paper. That, that was another thing acting like, because times were different. Okay. When, when, her shit got in the paper it was also because of who her husband is okay but are we gonna act like Juan wasn't in the paper for the assault that happened at his school girl what the fuck are you talking about Robin what the fuck are you talking about Juan was all over the papers the Washington Post like he was he was in reputable news sources about the sexual assault case that he did not handle correctly when he was working at that school which is really why he got fired that was his friend there was a whole recorded phone conversation of Juan admitting that he knew the assistant coach who was also a student had issues and you still put him in that position. And then you turned around and acted like you didn't know what was going on and had that kid's scholarship and all of that taken from him because he said something about being blackmailed by somebody that you hired. Yeah, he also couldn't coach his team to win that much. I wonder why, because he was, was fucking Coach Bree. Maybe if you wasn't worrying about Coach Bree's coochie and you was actually worrying about winning games, you would have had a better record and you would have been able to keep your job if you were more successful. You weren't successful enough to have drama like that and keep your job. That's just what it is. And I'm sure y'all can't tell me any different that Robin gets blamed for that at home. Robin gets everything that happens on this show. If these men are negatively affected, their wives get blamed for it. Just like Candace probably got a lot of heat from Chris and it put a, it, you know, that's nothing we're going to get to about why Candace was crying. Cause a lot of y'all, I think don't even understand why she got emotional. And we're going to talk about that in a second. Cause it's not just about her friendship with Robin. Um, and she said, she said it, but you know, nobody listens. Y'all see tears. And then y'all feel like, Hey, black girl, stop crying. You can't have emotions. Bitch. Anyway, um, they find we find it find it out that Robin is sharing info to bloggers is so hypocritical to me. The way I'm sorry, y'all. The way y'all get online and act like Candace is the fucking worst because she watches the show, gets upset, and then gets on Twitter and starts talking shit to you know on Twitter. Actually. Y'all act like that's bad. That's actually really good for the show. Anything that is going on in real time while the show is on on social media is good advertisement for the show. Please stop with the foolishness. Everybody does it. Why do you think Mary to Medicine and them were getting on live during their show right after with one another and arguing it bring it puts the show on the blogs now it's bringing more people to the show like this this is a marketing tool people so for y'all to really sit up there and act like what candace did was so damn bad when she got on twitter but you got robin not even being real on camera about her issue with giselle instead sharing it with blogs and sending motherfuckers videos of the argument between Juan and Giselle saying how mad she was at Giselle for putting it out there on camera that Juan screamed at her and went in on her. He wasn't screaming at her. He wasn't going, you were mad at her and we knew you were mad at her and you pretended not to be on camera so that y'all could have a united front. The fucking show is not good because of shit like that. The show is not good because you literally have two people on the cast that can decide what they're going to show. It's obnoxious. They're not even being real with each other. I could even understand if they were just withholding the shit that was going on in their personal lives. But that's not even just it. That's not the only thing. That's not the only thing. They're also withholding how they're dealing with each other. We can't even see y'all be real about y'all own friendship. Come on. They really both should have been fired. This whole show should have been recasted as far as I'm concerned. But if y'all going to keep Giselle, to me, that just proves that the colorism is what's at play. Favoritism to people who appear to be whiter than everyone else. I don't know why that's so hard for y'all to understand. She brings nothing. She's a fucking mean girl. She lies and covers shit up. And then y'all act like she is queen bee of the show. She can't read nobody. 
she don't ever really gather the laughing that she did at this reunion show was the most that she's ever really done at a reunion show besides sitting there with her straight face and her gobble neck cut it the fuck out robin is such a liar because at first she denies talking to bloggers and then when candace brings out these large poster boards that really were pointless because they ended up blurring them. She then says that she and Giselle had already talked about it. Which one is it, bitch? Which one is it? Did y'all talk about it already? Or did you not share the information with the blog? Before she knew that there was evidence, she denied it. And then after that, oh, we talked, we talked. Which one is it? Which one is it? It's Cap. That's what it is. It's Cap. Well, we're going to take a break. And then we're going to come back and the drag will continue. Like the video, share the video, let YouTube know that y'all are enjoying the content. Let's get these views and these likes up. Okay? All right. Anywhere you go, anywhere you go, give it up. y'all i don't know if y'all remember when i went to ghana last year in november november child we're reset by design wellness okay we had an amazing time this was a great retreat we had great accommodations we had a really amazing time we relaxed we related we released okay and we're gonna do it all over again in phuket thailand june 13th to the 20th Go to Reset by Design Wellness on Instagram as well as their website to get the information to sign up. We actually had one of the ladies um, cancel on us. So we have another single bed on the lower end. You can also use my code in the description box to get 5% off using Bondi5. Come, girl, because we're going to have a good time. All right. I'm already feeling, you know, my Shein carts. <laughs> Okay, I'm already feeling my GN cards so I could be styling and profiling. Okay, but y'all make sure that y'all go and sign up if y'all trying to come through, if y'all trying to have a good time. All right, now let's get back into it. So, Candace, Candace says that she still believes Ashley Giselle and Robin plotted on Chris, lying on him so that, that they would not have to talk about what was going on in their lives. They all laugh it off at the same time, which makes me know that that's exactly what it was. I'm sorry, y'all. I don't believe Ashley, Robin, and Giselle for a minute when they say that they did not plot on her. I do think they plotted on her. I'll say it again. I believe they meet up beforehand in order to decide how they're going to handle the season. They've been doing it for a while. And back when Candace was a part of those meetings, she outed them for it, which is probably why she was kicked out of those little group meetings and became the adversary. But also, I think because of her complexion. I, I'm sorry. You're not going to make me feel any differently about the colorism that I know people like Giselle, where she's from, what she looks like, her family. Like, you're not going to, how she handles people, who her friend is. Then also, you know, of course, I'm going to be light skinned like this and have my obsession with dark skinned men. Okay. Which is why, you know, the whole Jamal Bryant thing. Okay. Like that was about, you know, I got to be a little bit closer to my blackness. Okay. I got to let them know, I, you know, I want my, my privilege as a white adjacent woman. I want it. But at the same time, I want to also be able to fit in with the people that I come from. So that's what that's about. It doesn't mean that she isn't colorist. A lot of people feel like, oh, you know, baby, Danny dark girl. No, Dick, Dick, Dick is different. Dick is different. Okay. Dick is different. A woman can be a straight up racist, can't stand black people and still want some black dick. OK, get into it. It's a thing. People are not linear. They don't make sense. OK. Um, 
Andy asks what they need to move forward. Andy, get the fuck out of here. There's nothing they can do to move forward. It's done. I don't know why we still having these conversations. I guess a last failed attempt to see if we could have, you know, kept this this group together. No, it's not happening and stop trying to make it happen. Um, then Candace gets emotional and Giselle starts laughing about her fake tears. Candace says that she needed acknowledgement because it hurt Chris too. And he thought Robin was was her was their friend. He thought Robin was their friend. This is what she got emotional about, okay? This moment. Y'all think it's all about Robin. It's not all about Robin. It's about the fact that she trusted Robin. I don't know why she trusted Robin. Robin had been showing you how she didn't give a fuck about you in comparison to Giselle the entire time. But I guess because she came out and said that she wasn't cool with what Giselle was doing at the beginning of the season. If you notice, by the time we get to the reunion show last season, all of a sudden, well, I think we can admit a man going up to a hotel room doesn't look good. Can we, Robin? Because we can't admit that when Juan Dixon's name is on the goddamn receipt, okay? But whatever, girl. The hypocrisy is choking us all to death. Um, Candace was emotional also. Let's not forget. Candace has the mother wound thing, which means your relationships with other women are extremely triggering. Let's start there. Second of all, you caused issue with her husband. If y'all think that Candace and Chris were not arguing when Chris lost his fucking job because of the shit that goes on on this show. I'm sure they had conversations about how he has taken a lot of things, but losing opportunities because of lies made on this show was extremely detrimental to their relationship and probably what they had going on in their household. So to act like one cannot get emotional about how they actually had to go through bullshit because of a lie. Girl, go to hell. Go to hell. Robin says she doesn't want anything from her. Duh. It's very obvious that Robin doesn't care about her friendship with Candace and never has. Juan still doesn't have a job, but he's volunteering at their son's high school. Robin says she and Juan are happy and they go through highs and lows. Girl, that's lies. Y'all are not happy. That man don't like you. We'll see if y'all are still together when your kids turn 18. They should do a two-hour special on Juan's life. It's very intriguing. Is it? Is it intriguing? What part of it is intriguing? Because beyond his childhood and making it into the NBA and then losing all his money and marrying you and having the children with you, what else has been interesting about his life? Mishandling a, a, a child, uh, you know, not a child, but a young adult sexual assault at a college. Is that the, the intriguing shit? Tell us, tell us, give us a little trailer of what we can expect whenever somebody decides to do a two hour special on fucking Juan Dixon, who can't even show up for a reunion show when it's not even about him. How, how is he going to show up for a documentary about his life when he can't even show up for a reality show that features his life? Girl, go to hell. Giselle is mad that she got, this really pissed me off. This is why another reason why I felt like, how could you not see that she's using like racist tactics with Candace? Because to me, it is something that I have seen racist white people do when they harm a black person and then try to make the black person a threat in the situation, even though they were not really the issue in the threat. They were being threatened. And their response is then seen like some, you know, uh, atrocious uh, 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 violence when it is a response. It is a retaliation. OK, um, I think it's really annoying that she decided to make it seem as if Candace is the reason she's getting death threats when everybody on the show has gotten death threats talking about she made it about my skin color. So are you really trying to say that because Candace said with your white looking ass that then sparked something in the minds of millions and now they're coming to your door waving the 4-4 threatening you and your kids and you want us to feel sorry for you right but it's okay to keep saying that people's husbands are cheating on them it's okay to make it seem as if somebody's child might not be theirs it's okay to bully people on the show and try to get them off it's okay to lie on somebody's husband and say that he was trying to fuck you like all of that's okay all of that's okay, right? All of that is just what? Your cute fun shade? <laughs> is that little cute fun shade? Is that what y'all think that is? Mm. 
Okay. I don't agree with that. But yeah, no, I think Giselle is getting death threats because of her. And I think it's very annoying that you would think that it's Candace's fault. And Andy, I don't give a fuck about Candace liking some of those comments, calling Giselle the colorist, ignorant, mean girl that she is. Karen got a facelift and bought some land. She didn't have anything else going on this season. Mia and Jacqueline are closer than ever after, you know, the revelation that Jacqueline's boyfriend assaulted Mia when they were younger. Giselle blames Candace for people sending her death threats, people not liking her. Um, they also said that Candace took that moment about the women being assaulted when she tweeted and said that it was hard for her to watch Giselle feign any type of empathy for women who've been assaulted when she lied on Chris and tried to make it seem like he assaulted her or even that he wanted to assault her. I'm going to say she was trying to make it seem like he wanted to assault her because I feel like it's no different than when they said that Candy was going to drug Portia. I would never, never understand their friendship when I really think about that. Anytime I really think about that, I never understand why they're cool again. Um, but it absolutely feels just like that. Like you basically insinuated that he was trying to get you in the room and she did it during the reunion show and everybody keeps acting like that's not what she's saying. But it is it, she's reiterating that he made her go into a room. When she says that he knew, she actually said during the this reunion show, her exact words were he knew my team was not in my room. He knew my room was empty and he asked me to go in a room and that made me uncomfortable. That is what she said on the reunion show Sunday night. She literally said again that he had form, he had beforehand knowledge. She knew ahead of time that nobody was in her room. That insinuation means that that man was trying to get you into an empty room for a reason. And then you said that he wanted you to be a sneaky link and he was trying to try you. And this is one of those times when you think because you're so beautiful, everybody wants you. That's what you think, Giselle. For real. I think you've gone through your life thinking that. But you also said that he grabbed Deborah's ass to Robin. You said that to her. That's also on camera. So for everybody that keeps acting as if, you know, Candace is making this up, Candace is not making anything up. Y'all are paying, playing fucking semantics. Giselle talking about, you know, oh, I didn't say, I didn't say he forced me. Girl, made and forced are the same thing. Saying that he knew that nobody was in the room, saying he wanted to be a sneaky link saying that he made you uncomfortable all of that insinuates that that man was trying to get you alone in a room so he can do something to you that you did not want done that he was plotting on you that that is what you insinuated over and over again and you keep saying that's not what you're doing but you literally still saying the same shit on the reunion show so for Candace to have to look around and say, you know, to everybody, oh my God, you know what I'm saying? Am I losing my mind? That shit really pissed me off. And that's why I feel like she should have cursed everybody out. Because how dare y'all sit here with all of this fucking footage of her continuously saying these things in order to malign my husband and make it seem as if he would ever try to get a woman into a room so he can force her into a situation that she's uncomfortable with is to say that my husband is the type of man that would do some shit like that. That is to me like on the, on the lines of what, like libel or something like that. Like to me, you're trying to make it seem like this man is a sexual deviant, but the real sexual deviant, Michael, y'all let him skate. I wonder why. They're both white. What's the difference? One's married to a light-skinned woman and one's married to a dark-skinned woman? One has more money than the other? Because Chris has always been very nice to, to me in a way that I feel like he shouldn't. I Actually, I found quite the issue with the way that I think Chris would make apologies for Candace towards these women when a lot of times they were starting with her defamation and libel this show is becoming toxic yeah thank you okay so it's not just me it's definitely given like a defamation type of situation 
she tried to assassinate Chris's character. Yes. And it ended up losing. Like, why is nobody focusing on the fact that this man lost the job? Like, why is nobody focusing on the fact that that was probably a part, you know what I'm saying, of the reason? I, girl, everybody wants to act like they don't see it. I, I don't have the energy to pretend, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm not in that headspace right now, okay? Um, Wendy then asked if Candace can hold herself accountable. What can Candace hold herself accountable for? Wendy, I'm sorry. You know, I fuck with you, but please shut all the way the fuck up. The reason why I say that is because all you did was force a moment where we're asking if Giselle were to apologize, what would Candace say? Which then forces Candace to actually give an apology for pointing out that Giselle's white ass thinks because of her privilege, she can say whatever she wants to say. That is the truth. The truth is Giselle's walking through this life being handed a get out of jail free card for anything she does because she looks the way she does means she now she now has the mentality that she can lie on people she can push the envelope she can say anything she wants to say she can put uh uh you know what i'm saying she can put sugar on it all of that shit all y'all want to she can do whatever she want to do simply because she looks a certain way and people have allowed her to get away with it because what? She looks a certain way. That, that That's what it is. That's exactly what it is. And then, you know, Giselle, oh, I apologized. Um, I apologize for saying that he was a sneaky link. But the intention is still what the point is, y'all. The intention is that you still plot it. You still try to make it look a certain way. And then when I say that's what you was doing, now everybody wants to act like I'm crazy and laughing at me and being dismissive. They were gaslighting the fuck out of Candace. Giselle then says, he did not make me. He asked me to go to my room. NECA says, Candace, can you accept that? And Candace says, sure. But I would have been like, no, Aneka, because the, the, the damage has already been done. The damage has already been done. And she's admitting that she said these things. That was intentional. That was intentional. So, no, her, her slight acknowledgement of her plot on my fucking husband is not good enough. No, it's not. That would have been me. Personally, that would have been me. Okay. Robin calls Karen out for not seeing her side with Candace, but it's because even though Karen doesn't want to say it, she knows that that's exactly what they did, that they were plotting on Chris. She knows that because she feels they did the same thing with her and Ray. So even though she wants to keep her her cool factor with she and Giselle because she thinks that's what works best for this show, for them to kind of keep their love-hate relationship. That's why she's not defending you, Robin. It's not just because she doesn't like you, but because you've low-key done the same thing to Karen that you've done to, to Candace. Like, you're a bully too. So we are now trying to hold Karen accountable for giving Robin what she gives to Karen. Girl, go to hell. I don't care. Backstage, Gordon and Ink speak to each other on FaceTime. Child, that, that shit right there. <laughs> that was an interesting situation to watch Gordon be like, you know, I'm sure he's just worried about you because Ink called her phone a whole bunch of times. <sighs> Girl, I guess. I guess. Mia has solidified herself for next season. But I tell y'all, she lies so much. I don't care. I don't care. And then Wendy, you know, that Gordon told everybody that Ink came and tried to take Jeremiah from their house because he believes that that's his son. I feel like Ink sounds reckless, whether he's a fucking DJ, okay, or a radio personality. That's the same thing. Either way, I think it's weird that you haven't gotten a paternity test yet. I think it's weird that Ink, after all of this time of letting Gordon raise this child, would show up trying to take him. Are you insane? How about we have some conversations? 
How about how about we have some visits? That's weird as fuck that he thought he could just show up. It's weird as fuck that he was blowing your phone up during the reunion show. All of that does to me. I'm paying attention to those things, Mia. Get out of here with that shit. Hold up. And then lastly, how I feel about Robin. Robin is a dry, stale, stiff-haired, delusional, white-adjacent woman cosplaying her perception of Black struggle love through masochism and public humiliation. And if only Juan Dixon cared, this display of self-sacrifice would seem somewhat understandable. But he never shows up. And so she looks stupid. And when she tries to hold other people accountable for what's going on in their relationships, she looks even dumber. I hope she got fired. Giselle is a beautiful, boring, cold-hearted, colorist mean girl who peaked right before realizing that her pedestalized existence didn't make her exempt from being humiliated by a man who probably gave her an STD when he impregnated a member of the congregation she thought was beneath her, making her only true value, her beauty, obsolete when it was supposed to be most imperative. Oh, it was supposed to be funny. I like for my reads to be true, though. Well, that's all I got for y'all. Let me read these super chats and I'm going to get the hell out of here. OK, so what a daughter. Thank you so much. I haven't caught a live in forever. So happy to see you. Thank you. Lucky Charms. Thank you for the super chat. They better not bring Robin back after they made Kenya sit out one season for not sharing. Robin continues to not share her life. Are we going to ask ourselves why it is that Kenya? Got punished for shit that Robin and Giselle get to get away with? No? Okay. Uh, love 211215. Thank you for the super chat. Robin decided to go all in when Candace didn't get along with icing Wendy out during the Miami trip. Mm. Thank you for bringing that up. That's very true. Sweet Cherry, thank you for the super chat. Philly Join 86, thank you. Doing the Lord's work today, Bondi. Listen, I'm trying. I'm trying. Lady T, thank you for the super chat. Morning, Bondi. I'm late, but go in. What's up with productions? Will Gizzy ever be held accountable for anything? No, I don't think so. Dequasia, thank you for the super chat. Lady Lisa, thank you. Truth, not one damn time, okay? I don't know what you're referring to, but I feel like I know what you mean. <laughs> KDSCM first. Thank you for the super chat. And she was somebody's first lady. Exactly. Can y'all imagine? You supposed to be going to this woman for emotional support? Girl, get the fuck out of here. Anyway, I have to go. Brown skin. Uh, thank you for skin in. Thank you for the super chat. Hi, Bondi. Bye, Robin. Listen, bye, Robin. Bye, Robin. Okay. I'm out of here and I will see y'all in the next video. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe to the channel. I'll see y'all in the next one.